Good evening, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Cabinet meeting of the 10th of November 2022. So we'll go straight in with apologies for absence. Everybody is present, so there are none. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting, your wish I sign those as true record. Councillor Summers proposes, Councillor Pritchard second, all those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. Consider those as a signed record. Uh, agenda item three, declarations of interest. Does anybody have any pecuniary or prejudicial interest to declare? No. Okay, item four is question time. I'm not aware of any questions from the public. Um, no, we haven't received any. In that case, we'll race straight on to agenda item five, which is matters referred to the Cabinet in accordance with overview and scrutiny procedure rules. Uh, and this evening we have a recommendation from the Chairman of Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee. And we welcome Rosie Claymore, sorry, Councillor Claymore, to the Cabinet meeting. We'd like to present your report. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I will. Um, the background to this recommendation. Um, sorry, excuse me. So, Claymore, so th this is, um, just to clarify, that this is a request for us to consider that all public-facing staff should complete suicide prevention or awareness training. That's correct. Okay. Um, in, in light of that, I'm going to make three motions based on that recommendation. Uh, one is that the specific recommendation as worded in the report is referred to... Um, is referred to, to Andrew Barrett and Anisha Goodwin to expedite uh, the, the, the suicide prevention and awareness training to all public facing staff as appropriate. Uh, my second recommendation uh, based on that, sorry, my second motion based on that recommendation is that all councillors uh, should receive mental health first aid uh, training um, because uh, well, whilst we're not front-facing staff, we're certainly front-facing uh, and we pick up, uh, uh, we have a lot of contact with, uh, with mem members of our community. Uh, and third, uh, I'd like to move the motion that um, a session is organised for all councillors uh, to receive a presentation from, uh, from the Samaritans explaining not only their achievements uh, and the good work they do, but actually giving some councillors some real insights as to, to the type of calls and the type of work they do in, in the community, because I think they, uh, it's, it's very easy to assume. Um, so they're my three uh, motions based on that recommendation that Councillor Claymore has presented. Councillor Clements. I was just going to say I'm happy to second those. Um, leader, I have myself done um, prevention suicide, uh, suicide prevention online and I've done the uh, mental health first aid one online. LGA do them for members, so it's, they're, they're easily available. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or comments? Mr. Barrett. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just um, if uh, Cabinet could also consider if there is any cost pressure um, to delivering training that's not 
contained within any available budgets if they consider releasing suitable contingency to cover the cost of, um, of, of training for this so we can expedite it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I assume that would go without saying, but yes, we'll, we're aware of that. Yeah. Um, right, so, so an additional motion to release uh, specific contingencies where necessary should there be a cost pressure on delivering that training. Are we all happy with that addition? Yep, okay. Um, before I move to the vote, Councillor Claymore, does that satisfy the request of the committee? Yes, Chair, and um, I agree with all the, the um, additional motions that you put in. I think that would be really useful and really helpful, especially for councillors when they're going out and meeting people in their own homes and sometimes not realising the pressures that these residents are under. So, yes, I fully support that. And on the cost one, I did have a look while I'm waiting for an answer back to see whether we do provide it in-house or whether we would have to go to an outside body I'm still waiting for an answer on that, but yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we can find find that out, and if uh, uh, if somebody can respond to Councillor Claymore, well, that'd be useful. Okay, so I've moved those. Councillor Clements has seconded. All those in favour? Okay, that's unanimous. So that is carried. Thank you very much for your time this evening, Councillor Claymore. Well. Thank you. You're quite welcome to stay. Well, you don't have to. <laughs> Um, item six on the agenda is Gungate Regeneration Programme in terms of reference, and this is the report of Councillor Doyle. Thank you, Mr Chairman. The purpose of this report is to provide Cabinet with a proposed governance structure for the Gungate Regeneration Programme to be used to oversee the development and delivery of emerging projects within the scope of the wider programme. Over the past three years, significant work has been undertaken to bring forward developments at the town, on the town centre regeneration site known as Gungate, comprising land south of Spinning School Lane, which is in council ownership, and land north of Spinning School Lane, which is in multiple ownership. As a result, a formally approved governance structure is now required to ensure the right controls are in place to manage any decision making for the wider programme. It is intended that the governance approach to the terms of reference for the Gungate Regeneration Programme is identical in nature to that of the future High Street Fund. These terms of reference will create the agreed governance structure, a board with a similar function to the future High Streets Programme Board, relevant delegated powers of decision making and a framework for financial controls to ensure the programme can progress within its set parameters and detailing the necessary scrutiny arrangements. To note, recently the Corporate Scrutiny Committee reviewed and considered the draft terms of reference and proposed governance for the uh, Gungate Regeneration Programme. This took place on the 6th of October. The outcome of that review was the following. There are a member of one of there are a member of one of the opposition parties be represented on the board programme and for this to be decided at Cabinet. Which member of the opposition to attend would be agreed by the leader of each opposition party? <laughs> The level and also the level of financial control remains the same as the current future high street levels. So the recommendations to Cabinet are as follows. First, to approve the terms of reference for the Gungate Regeneration Programme and secondly also consider proposals from Corporate Scrutiny Committee that a member of one of the opposition parties become a board member. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Any questions or comments from the Cabinet? Silence. Okay, um, I think the, the key thing uh, we need to really keep in mind when we're considering not only this paper, but future papers, uh, and that is the Programme Board Terms of Reference, the very first line. The Programme Board has a strategic role that includes several responsibilities and accountabilities. This is not a management board, it's a Programme Board, uh, and that's exactly where uh, where, where councillors should sit in, in the process. Uh, so if there are no further questions or comments from Cabinet, um, do you have a motion to move, Councillor Dorr? Yes, I move uh, the motion. Okay, so, so is that motion to approve the terms of reference of the Gungate Regeneration Programme? Yes. 
Second. Councillor Pritchard has seconded. All those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. Brings us on to item seven, which is the report of the portfolio holder for homelessness prevention and social housing. Councillor Farrell. Thank you, Mr Chairman. It's quite a lengthy report, um, so there are a few things I'd like to highlight. Basically, this was um, uh, continued, basically, coverage of the Homelessness Subcommittee who have been reviewing the Council's preparedness for the significant changes in the regulation of social housing um, effectively since the last year or so. Um, around February uh, this year, an external self-assessment was commissioned um, and the findings are set out in this report. Um, it's good news for the council. There are some learnings as well, um, but we're, we're doing very well. Um, I'd also like to highlight a couple of things. I think it's very important that we as a council put the tenants at the, the heart of what we do. Um, so I've um, introduced onto the homelessness um, subcommittee uh, a couple of tenants from the tenant consultative group, Sally and Iris. Um, they took part in the most recent meeting. Um, so there's a few recommendations on there, including to um, involve tenants more um, and endorse the findings of the self-assessment. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments from Cabinet? Nothing at all. Okay, the only comment I was going to make was uh, it's good to see involvement uh, with, with tenants being part of that uh, uh, of that committee. Um, my only concern, and it's not a concern directly around this, it's about tenant participation and always has been the same concern, is are we reaching the people we need to reach when we're, when we're dealing with tenant consultative panels and, and, and representation? Um, but that is a, is a question that will continue to be around and, uh, and uh, forever and a day because it's, a, it's an open-ended one. Um, any further? Oh, sorry, Councillor Farrell. Thank you, Chair. Sorry, my, my computer has been funny, but I, I agree with you there about tenants. Um, Iris joined the tenant consortium group in around 2008, I believe, and Sally's, Sally's been on there since 2017. So I think as far as their longevity on, on the group, it, it's very important, but I agree with you, we should be reaching out to as many local tenants as possible but thank you for those yeah, comments. just just to clarify i'm not suggesting suggesting we have more tenants on the panel uh, uh my concern was how do we make sure we reach all the tenants we need to um and there is a lot to be said for those who have served a number of years on uh on panels and in terms of uh, engagement with the council because they also gain an awareness of how things work and can provide that uh, not professional because that's the wrong term but that experience, view uh, and level of understanding. Uh, Mr Barrett. Th th thank you, Chair. Um, I think it's, it's probably just worth, worth highlighting, whilst this is very firmly focused at, at our, um, our, our housing area, the actual um, uh, uh, Regulatory Act will involve an awful lot of the, the wider organisation. So as well as this sort of being an assessment of our, of our housing, um, it's going to be an assessment of the organisation as a whole. So, you know, we really just need to, don't need to underestimate what's involved in it. Um, there's a lot of corporate services that will be uh, looked at as part of this, council's governance, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a, um, a big undertaking for the right reasons. Um, I don't know if my, my colleague, Mr. Barnes, has any further comments on that. No, I think that's, that's been covered. But I mean, just to come back on, on the leader's point, I think the, the, the involvement of tenants in the committee is one tool that we'll be using to show that involvement of, of tenants in decision making but obviously we've got to have a range of other stuff developed and, and improved and I guess what the if we do get inspectors what, inspected what the inspectors will be asking will be so what you know what decisions have been made and how did tenants influence that so again it's that building that evidence base where we can really say tenants um, you know had the biggest stay or certainly their voices were heard and and the impact of that was on these decisions in terms of the um, corporate nature of the assessment, absolutely correct. Um, you know, we, we do have that one council approach, so this is an assessment of the overall organisation, the council as a whole, um, and not what we might traditionally think of as just being the housing service. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you, Mr Barrett. Thank you, Mr Barnes. Uh, Councillor Farrell. Thank 
last year, so I've got technical problems. But it might be worth pointing out also in the recommendations, we talk about um, the rent cap. Uh, the council has um, submitted um, comments to the government about their proposed um, rent cap of 5%. Currently, the rent cap is uh, CPI plus 1% which in these terms would work out to be about 11%. Um, so there is a, an, an issue um, maybe in the future for us if the government do decide to go to the 5% rent cap, and that could have serious implications on our HRA budget. So that's acknowledged in his recommendations as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Farrell. And that's also acknowledged in uh, Appendix 4 of the, of the papers. So thank you for that. Um, any further questions or comments from Cabinet? Have you moved you moving the recommendations, Councillor Farrell? Councillor Farrell has moved those. I have a seconder. Councillor Clements, all those in favour? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. So we move on to agenda item eight, which is grant support for Tamworth Pride event. Councillor Pritchard. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, Tamworth Pride is becoming quite a popular uh, event in the uh, town's annual calendar. Uh, so the report seeks to release £5,000 annually from uh, contingency budget to be used as a grant towards uh, Tamworth Pride for a period of three years uh, and, and Cabinet give authority to the Theatre Artistic and Events Manager to release the grant annually to the Tamworth Pride Committee uh, to enable that to go forward. Uh, so I'm happy to take any questions, but it's really just a, a report to release a, a small amount of funding to help support that event. Thank you, Councillor Pritchard. Any questions or comments? Councillor Clements? Yeah, can I just ask, so we're just going to be providing the funding. They are still going to run the event. Yes. Councillor Pritchard? Yes, this is a, a, a release from us to help them hold that event and organise it. OK, Councillor Clements. Yeah. I saw your hands go up. I thought, is that the answer? You discussed that on the laptop. <laughs> Any further questions or comments from Cabinet? OK, I'll throw my two pennies in. Uh, I think it's, it, it, as I said when I first became leader, we need to be an inclusive community. Uh, and I think it's great we're supporting this particular event. But I, I see this and the support for this event uh, as an example as to how we should be working better with the community to put on large scale events uh, in, in the castle grounds and in, in the town centre. Uh, there, there are a number of community groups in the town who have the know-how uh, and the ability to put on large events but don't have the support to actually get them over the line. Uh, so for me, if we can move forward and start looking at community events in this way uh, rather than solely Borough Council funded large activities, then I think there's opportunity for us to, to broaden the spectrum uh, of what's on offer. Councillor Pritchard, have you moved the recommendation? No, but I'll move them now. OK, I'm happy to second that. All those in favour? OK, that is carried. Thank you very much. And that brings us on to agenda item nine, which is the exclusion of press and <coughs> public. So that in accordance with the provisions of the local authorities, executive arrangements, meeting and access to information, England regulation 2012, section 100A4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the press and public be excluded from the, from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraphs 1 and or 3 of part 1 of schedule 12A of the Act and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public. I move. Second. Seconded by Councillor Pritchard. All those in favour? Round that is carried. Thank you very much. If the press and public could be invited to leave and if the cameras could be switched off. Please.